H. Yep, come up, Femi. <laughs> so it's the clicker and the green button for clicker. Cool. Yeah, um, hi, my name's Femi. I'm founder of Hacker Femo. difficulties, no. Um, so yeah, I started coding when I was seven. And uh, wait, no, I'm way around. I started coding when I was eight. And when I was nine, I set up South London Raspberry Jam through crowdfunding to share my passion for coding with other young people who might not otherwise be exposed to tech. Uh, since then, I've run hundreds, literally hundreds, of coding and robot workshops across UK and globally. Uh, in 2017, I uh, wrong side. Uh, in 2017, I was awarded an inaugural Legacy Diana Award uh, by their Royal Highnesses Prince William and Prince Harry for my service to the community. Uh, at Southland and Rosby Jam, we welcome young people uh, with autism or like me Tourette syndrome, because you know, coding linked me up to a wider community of like-minded and similar people. And I kind of just want to do the same for others who might also benefit from that. For me and my mum, it's been quite a journey, you know, from South London to the world famous Tate Modern Museum, uh, all the way to Bangladesh, and then uh, to the States, uh, to San Francisco, where I did a keynote talk to around 7,000 delegates at the Red Hat Summit 2018, which was really cool. <laughs> like. <laughs> So yeah, um, I set up my business about a year ago and um, I've been running workshops for almost three years now. And over this time, I've noticed that for young people, it's becoming like increasingly important for them to have collaborative and community-led initiatives. So being able to get out there into their community, find something, you know, to do with coding, you know, get to meet other people who are also coding and network and, you know, be able to, like, share experiences and stuff. But also, um, but also having, like, career-ready skills uh, so that, you know, the next generation are going to have to solve the next generation of business problems. And it's sort of making, making them ready with the skills that they will need. Uh, so, yeah, on this journey, I've noticed... Um, well, out of all of the uh, out of all of the things that I've noticed on my journey, they all have one thing in common: the power of open source and the importance of developing community. And today, I want to talk about three of my lessons. So, the first one is the value of reaching out and collaborating. Secondly, the importance of partnering with enterprise. And finally, perhaps the most important one the ability to self-organize and persist, which translated into English means having a can-do attitude, you know, getting stuff done. So yeah, over my years uh, running workshops, I've noticed there's big underrepresentation of BME, so that's black and ethnic minority, and lower social economic groups within the coding field. And, you know, I want to change this, so, um, now with my new project, I'm at uh, my new project, which is the uh, Young Coders Meetups. Uh, I'm actually developing an outreach program as well, so that we can get into grassroots community and get m communities and get more people involved. Partnering with enterprise, so you know, this is about giving young people a value, and young people are going to have to face the next future business problems, and this. <laughs> What I want, I want to do more for young people and, um, and for the next generation. So I'm developing uh, transactional pathways with uh, enterprises and fintech so that uh, people can come to us young coders to come and solve their business problems. And, you know, we can give them a cool idea and stuff, and, but they'll put, like, they'll give the people who find the ideas, you know, a prize and stuff, and it's giving a value to what young people do. 
So um, this is the most important one. Can-do attitudes are what open source and ideas need. Like, nobody got anywhere saying they can't do something. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious. <laughs> However, in everything we do, we always make sure that our basic principles stay the same. So always encouraging innovation and creativity. Always being fully inclusive. You know, being youth-led. Having the confidence to define our own journeys and pathways. So what motivates me? Well, um, over the years, since me doing lots of workshops, generally I get a lot of positive feedback and stuff, and it really, really motivates me to go out there and do better. Um, because, you know, when I use real feedback that I get from workshops and put it into new ones, it really makes me feel like I'm actually hitting the mark, you know, what people expect in my workshops. And, um, well, if I'm going to be honest, it is actually kind of like the great opportunities I get. Like, I mean, coming to Facebook, going to America for a week to do a keynote. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> I have got to admit, it is kind of that. <laughs> but, but then again, you have to work really hard for those opportunities. So um, I've been working on the PowerPoint for this uh, for almost a week. And when I went to Red Hat, I worked on the PowerPoint for f about... Uh, a month and a half, you know, Skyping twice a week with America, which was a bit crazy. But, you know, it's kind of worth it. <laughs> oh, yes, so in the future, um, I want to create an overreaching platform for young coders so that they can come together, you know, meet up, network, but also develop those pathways into fintech, business and um, also solve future business problems and we want to give them that collaborative and community-led uh, well that collaborative and community-led environment and the career-ready skills that they'll need no nope, wrong way <laughs> so yeah well i've raced through this haven't i um so yeah, I'll talk about this bit then. So at the moment, I'm doing a new, uh, I'm doing a, a new project called the Young Coders Meetup, and of course, I'm doing an outreach program with it as well. And essentially, it's the idea that, you know, there's events like this for adults, but how about for kids? <laughs> you know, I was quite jealous of my mum being able to go to all of these meetups at places like Facebook and Skills Matter and stuff. And I, like, with all the beer and pizza, and I was like, why can't I go? And she told me it's too late, and it's on a weekday. <laughs> so, yeah, I wanted to develop this sort of thing for young people so they can come together, you know, network and find that collaborative and community-led space. And um, also, one of the other bits that I've been implementing as well is the ethos of over uh, the ethos of open source around it. So after our well, it's going to be a six-month pilot, and after our six-month pilot running, a work uh, running about a day each month, where the coders can come meet up. You know, we want to take everything, all the feedback, all the statistics, you know, everything, and put it into an open source handbook, so that you know so that we can make it so that young people from across the world can start setting up their own young coders meetups and outreach programs through crowdfunding as well. And, you know, we want to make it open source so that, well, I've heard some new words recently about like, it's like upscaling. So it's like taking, taking something to the next level. So, um, so we want to be able to upscale this, and we think, you know, as young coders, it'd be cool to do a little project around it and use some open source and stuff. So yeah, also yesterday, or today, was the last day of my crowdfunding campaign. Um, however, I have just continued it. Um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, I have just continued it, and I think you know what's coming. 
Um, so that now it goes on forever. And if anyone's interested, <laughs> forever, <laughs> if anyone's interested, you can go to um, my website, which is hackfema.com, and there should be a, crowdfund a crowdfunding page. And um, yeah, well, there's a video on the crowdfunding page as well. And yeah, another thing, go check out hackfemo.com. You know, it's cool. I need to hit to my website. Um, <laughs> yeah, I do lots of vlogs and stuff and um, some some stuff about what I've been doing. You know, I've talked to a VC about my business. I've got some, I've done some uh, workshops with some people called Tickfest because I have Tourex myself. And that sort of brought me back to why I started coding which was around, you know, like wanting to share my passion with others who can't get into tech in such an easy way um, because they might not have or feel like they have the inclusive environment in which they can do that. Oh, wrong way again. <laughs> so my final challenge to you is to support young coders. In what way can you help young people be ready for the future. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Femi, can you just stay for one minute? Because um, uh, we had a question. Uh, we had a question from the uh, someone uh, remote, right? And the question to you was, Femi, what attracted you to Raspberry Pi as an open source platform instead of the alternatives? So, um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, if you didn't know, is has like a massive community base. And when we started up, you know, we really got involved in the Raspberry Pi community and they're really, really like really helpful and that's why we did all of our first workshops and stuff. And then we set up South London Raspberry Jam, sort of took it to the next level. And to be honest, I'm not sure why we chose Raspberry Pi over everything else. I mean I guess it was just one of the things that we were first introduced to in the community, and I just wanted to share what I knew with other people. Um, but now, in fact, we've moved on. Well, we still do Raspberry Pi, but we've also moved on to doing stuff about um, microbits. Also, recently, I learned about Facebook's React, and um, now I'm really into that, and I'm trying to use it to create a Young Coders Meetup website and app. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Thanks very much for me. So everyone who has children aged 10 to 16, 10 to 16 uh, nephews, nieces, please, there is now a Young Coders Meetup when young people can actually code and hack and uh, participate in workshops. So thank you very much for me. Thank, thank you. you.